battling right-wing extremism in Germany. What would banning the neo-Nazi NPD achieve? In the interview, Chairman of the German Interior Minister's Conference, Lorenz Kaffier. The German states have unanimously decided to initiate proceedings to ban the far-right NPD party. Mr. Kaffier, as Interior Minister of the Eastern German state of Mecklenburg-Vorpommern, you are one of the most vocal advocates of the ban. What are your main arguments for this? The main arguments in and of themselves are relatively straightforward. All democratic parties are united in the belief that the NPD is unconstitutional. That applies to its image, attitude, aggressive stance and the way it operates. I think people have very little sympathy for the fact that they're unconstitutional, but they're funded by taxpayers and state parliaments and can establish their structures on local councils and can undermine society as a whole. So we're making the right decision in launching a new procedure to ban the party based on the material we have gathered. The NPD has existed for over 30 years. It is now in two Eastern German state parliaments, including yours. But it only has 6,000 members and is on the decline. Can it not be fought in the political arena? Well, a ban is not going to solve the problem of right-wing extremism. That remains a challenge for society as a whole, but we would be able to restrict the activities of the NPD considerably in terms of its structures, funding and networking. And I think that's what people expect politicians to do. We need a clear decision, yes or no. What's your experience of the NPD? The party was voted into the state parliament for a second time last year. What's your approach? Our state parliament has introduced a pact known as the Schwerin approach. One party represents all the pro-democracy parliamentary groups to oppose any NPD proposal. So, in effect, any NPD idea is automatically shot down and pro-democracy forces in this state have adopted a very clear position. Locally, it's important that we keep in contact with our constituents through regular meetings and different institutions, because the NPD is very keen on being seen as the caring party in some regions. That means all the political and social forces need to work together. Regional government programs under our Democracy and Tolerance program have enabled us to set up and finance what are known as democratic centers, which act as strategic networks to fight extremism and particularly right-wing extremism. The term democratic center sounds a lot more technical than caring party. How does the NPD demonstrate its concern? In some places, the NPD offers help sessions for people receiving welfare benefits. We know some people go to these. My idea is really quite simple. If the NPD can do it, then representatives of other parties can too. Standing on street corners complaining about what's wrong or not working is not the solution. Democracy is about getting involved. But you can't ban an idea. How does banning the NPD help the fight against right-wing extremism? It's true. We can't destroy the mindset with a ban. But at the end of the day, we have to come to grips with history more strongly than we did, say, in East German days. Back then, there was a tendency towards a very one-sided view of history, both in the East and in the West. There's no question that we need to play catch up in both halves of the country. Is that the reason why Germany imposes stricter standards than other European countries like France? Broader right-wing extremist movements are more entrenched there. I think Germany has a responsibility to be very firm in its opposition to right-wing extremism. Because of its history, so we need different rules than other countries. 
Despite all the support, there are some skeptics in the Bundestag and the federal government. They raise both legal and political arguments. Legally, people point to the failed attempt to outlaw the party nine years ago. That effort failed because the Constitutional Court said the party was infiltrated by intelligence officers to such a degree that it almost seemed to be state-controlled. What do you say to that today? State interior ministers decided to clear the way for another attempt to ban the party earlier this year. Firstly, they deactivated the intelligence officers that had infiltrated the party at leadership and policy-making level, so evidence could be collected. We have the big advantage of knowing what mistakes were made last time. We know why the Constitutional Court decided against a ban, because of the way evidence was collected and because of the infiltration of intelligence officers. We've gone about things differently this time. We've got clear rules for all states and at the federal level too, in order to have good evidence to present to the court. So you're certain that the ban will be imposed? I'm certain. Otherwise, I wouldn't be fighting so hard for it. I also think that democratic forces should be prepared to take this risk. If you go to court, there's always an element of risk that you won't win. But I think that democracy can handle that too. Because we're at a point now where we're clearing up a major issue. Is the NPD a party that should be banned or not? That's why it's the right thing to do, and my colleagues and I are very optimistic that we'll have the necessary evidence that this party is unconstitutional. But if not, wouldn't that legitimize the party? No, it wouldn't. I think democratic forces have come to terms with that as well. For one thing, we'll be able to stop this endless conversation that goes on year after year, month after month, about whether trying to ban the NPD is a good idea or not, and what the chances are. The debate of the last weeks and months has shown that the NPD is very much in the public consciousness. That's why it's important once and for all to have the court issue a ruling on it. The NPD says the debate over a ban hurts it more than the ban itself. If it was introduced, the party could play the martyr and increase its popularity. Yes, but I don't have to judge or evaluate the NPD's stupid statements. What about the NPD taking the matter to the European Court of Human Rights? The standards are stricter than in Germany. How do you view that risk? First of all, that's something that always comes up, that their standards are stricter than here in Germany. But we do have very strict standards here in Germany. The European Court is also aware of German history and would take into account the atrocities committed under the Nazi regime, among other things, because that's the basic ideology of the NPD. So the starting point of departure and approach are different. If we look at the political arguments that have been made against pursuing a ban, some say it could boost the NPD and is also a case of excess activism. They maintain it is only to divert attention from the failure to prosecute the neo-Nazi terror trio that committed a series of murders over the years. What do you say? For me, a ban on the NPD was an important question long before the terror trio came to light. And it's come up repeatedly at meetings of the interior ministers. It's always been clear to us that we have wanted to initiate proceedings to ban the party, regardless of the horrifying deeds perpetrated by the terror trio. It's correct that when the news of the terror trio emerged, it appeared as if they had close ties to the NPD scene. That seemed to create a fairly simple argument for making the party itself illegal. But the evidence we now have doesn't suggest that the terror cell was in bed with the NPD. Certainly some individuals had connections. We need to investigate the NSU and the mistakes and failures. 
But that's very different from the question of a ban and is not a political issue for me. But the investigation into the murders committed by the terror trio has helped generate political support for a ban. I think that's true too. Another fundamental argument that some people make is that banning a party is an authoritarian measure, that this should be a last resort. Some question whether this really is appropriate in a free democracy. That's certainly a valid question, but I believe it's entirely appropriate in a free society that we tell people who are not ready to accept people of another skin color, who have a basic ideology that is anti-Semitic, racist and Nazi, that we, as supporters of democracy, tell these people that they should be banned based on our experience of German history. We have to tell them they are unconstitutional and they are not rooted in Germany's basic law. So I think our decision is the right one. There have been two party bans in the history of the Federal Republic, both in the 1950s. The first was a ban of the successor party to the Nazis. Later, the country banned the German Communist Party. Former Constitutional Court President Jutta Limbach later said that outlawing the Communist Party was historically comprehensible, but was not a sign of a healthy democracy. Sixty years later, are we still not secure enough in our democracy to be able to combat an unconstitutional party without an outright ban? That's something we can discuss politically. And it's possible to have different views. I personally believe, alongside many other people, that it's not a question of being 30, 40, 50, 60 years later. Rather, it's a question of confronting the fundamental issue. There should be no room for national socialist ideas in Germany in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you.